Welcome, everyone, to the official launch of our Southwestern Career Connection webcast. I'm your co-host, Tyler Good, and during this bizarre season with all the uncertainty and economic unpredictability in the world, we wanted to provide you some insights on the employment climate in Southwestern Community College's service area. I read just this morning that more than 36 million Americans lost their jobs since the COVID-19 pandemic started. And that's why we're launching this pod, webcast and podcast, is to give folks in our area hope and advice for their future career decisions. A few quick housekeeping details before we get into the conversation. We are recording the event now for our podcast. And for those of you following and joining live in Google Meet, please remember to mute your microphones. If you have any questions for our guests, you can just type them into the chat and our producer, Austin Warren, will help me get a few of those if we have time. Few individuals have been following trends more closely than our own Director of Career Services, Mike Despo, and he's my co-host this morning. Each week, we'll be inviting employers from a specific industry with an SCC faculty member representing that same field. Today, we're honored to have Larry Hinton of Andy Shaw Ford and Silva and Tiffany Talent of Countryside Chevrolet and Franklin along with our own David Myers, who oversees Southwestern's Ameri Autom I'm sorry, Automotive Systems Technology Program. Andy Shaw Ford and Countryside Chevrolet employ a growing number of our graduates, so we're glad to have all of you here this morning. Before we get into the automotive field, I want to ask you, Mike, if you would just open up by kind of giving us an overall overview, honest assessment of the overall job climate in our service area. Thank you, Tyler. I'd be delighted to give a bird's eye view of everything. And then we'll, of course, bring that right back to trade skilled labor and specifically automotive. Uh, so as you know, uh, we SEC had a uh, pretty large career fair, two of them actually, in the first week of March. And things were predictably because, uh, you know, it's that time of year going gangbusters. We filled the grand room with uh, with the, the, the Burrell Comfort Center main room with uh, you know, employers of all types, from healthcare to hospitality and tourism, and and uh, to business, uh, just about every kind of every sector of our economy. And and immediately afterwards, we had a trade, skilled labor, and automotive fair planned for March seventeenth, and we all know what happened with that. Uh, and so, as we've been uh, regrouping and figuring out how to help employers, it's important to understand that. Career services aims to be a critical nexus between employers in our service region, our students, our alumni, our general public, and our faculty so that we can help everybody come together and meet everybody's needs. And in that light, we provide a lot of services and support, which I'll talk about at the end in a little while. But uh, first of all, we, we, we monitor the employment situation. And I'm I'm a glasses half full kind of guy, and and so I can say that um, forty six percent of all employers across our service region do expect to be hiring within three months, and many of them right now. And we'll hear about that in just a little bit. I expect uh, significantly more to be hiring outside of that three months. And uh, came across a chamber of um, of of commerce. Uh, survey, which yielded some data that shows that five areas uh, are, are hiring immediately and or, or are actually very concerned about retaining staff or being able to recruit staff very soon. And that's food and beverage, retail, arts and entertainment, professional services, and personal services. And these areas include everything from culinary arts to business and administrative office training and cosmetology, civil engineering tech, paralegal, um, and uh, outdoor leadership. And so many of our programs at SEC are positioned to help students find essential opportunities, so opportunities that are essential now, opportunities that will be essential in the future. Yes, yes. We, we hear a lot about the term essential jobs. It's one of these new terms you hear that, that we didn't hear very often before COVID came around. Um, please give us your take, Mike, on uh, as to what folks listening right now should be thinking about when they hear that term. 
Well, what immediately comes to mind when you hear the term essential job are things like supply chain, uh, grocery stores, and and, uh, and large retail stores like Lowe's that uh, supply consumers with really critical needs. Um, those are hiring left, right, up and down yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And uh, you'll find many of those jobs in our job board. Uh, also, some areas of healthcare. If you have a CNA certification from SCC, or if you're a nursing student, or many of our other healthcare students, those jobs are essential for obvious reasons. They're always essential to society, more so now than ever. Um, however, you know, uh, every job is essential to to the to the job seeker. And that is why we are not only uh, identifying immediate opportunity as we are today with trades, with automotive, with skilled labor, because whether you're in automotive or you're a welder or an HVAC, um, you know, they're, you're needed now. But, you know, we're also looking to that 46% of employers who are going to be actively hiring within this three months. Many are in hospitality and tourism and Highlands and Cashers and in Cherokee mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, in, in Bryson and surrounding us. And uh, many are also, uh, you know, our Main Street is in is going to be in need of, of support and help to every one of those jobs is essential to our economy. And they're essential to the individual who needs to put groceries on their table. So that's another reason we're here to help. Good point. Good point. Well, moving over to our guests this morning. And thanks again, uh, Larry and Tiffany, for joining us. Could you just each give us uh, briefly how, how, uh, an overview? How is business for you, each of you in these crazy times? Well, let's start with you, Larry, and then we'll uh, get Tiffany on. Uh, hey, good morning, Tyler. Business, business is good. Uh, we saw a turn, uh, typically it looked like right around the last week of March. We really don't want to talk a whole lot about March around the dealership. However, uh, it, it did turn in, in April and uh, our, our technicians are busy now all across the board, including the collision repair facility. And uh, vehicle sales have picked up quite a bit, so we're we're excited about moving full speed ahead. Glad glad to hear that, Tiffany. Give us your takeover on the other side of the Cowie Mountain. Yeah, so I would say we're we're in the same boat. I mean, business has actually been really good. You know, you would with the way the economy is, you would expect. Um, you know, kind of a turn down, but um, the manufacturers have really stepped up to help, you know, with incentives and rebates and interest rates and um, even, you know, making accommodations in the service department to, to kind of continue business as usual. You know, I think we have to think outside the box a little bit as far as accommodating our customers and making them feel safe and making them feel like everything is, you know, in a clean environment and things like that. But Business has actually been overall really good. That's I'm glad to hear that. That's that's good news, uh, not just for you all, but I think for the local economy and the job outlook around here. Um, Larry, I know that Andy Sean, we've talked about this many times, but um, you all have both the service department and a sales department. Speaking specifically to the auto repair side of the house. For a moment, how COVID proof is that profession? <laughs> well, I'd like to say we're 100% COVID proof. <laughs> uh, however, I uh, don't think I could, anybody could say that, even a hospital. Uh, but uh, we're taking the normal precautions uh, that, and the protocols that we've seen rolled out by the National Auto Dealers Association and, and North Carolina Dealers Association, we provide a touch-free experience uh, if you're coming in for service or sales. Uh, it includes sanitizing vehicles before and after we use them, uh, steering wheel covers, seat covers, uh, uh, social distancing between our customers and our service advisors and the technicians it's it's become pretty standardized for us over the past few weeks and there we always look at our business as a three-way stool what's best for our customer what's best for our employees and what's best for the dealership and you know we weigh all three of those legs and 
uh, make sure that we're providing a safe work environment for our employees and a safe uh, environment to do business for our, our, our customers. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Tiffany, um, what, what do you look for when you're hiring someone for your service department at Countryside Chevrolet? What are some of the uh, aspects and characteristics you look for in an employee, respectively? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we look for any type of experience. You know, I know a lot of times there's there's uh, students coming right out of school. So, you know, we'll look at their their education. We'll look at what they want to specialize in, um, their career objectives, you know, and then and then you kind of drill that down to do you have a clean driver's license? You know, when you come in, do you um, have a nice appearance? How's your attitude? Um you know, we try to gauge people here because we don't look for short term employees. We look for somebody to join our dealership family. Um, and so we look for um, career goals, objectives. What are your future plans? You know, because if we're going to invest the time into the certifications and the training and we want to know that, um, you know, people are career oriented and that that's, that's what they're here to do. Um, you know, resumes are always a plus. Um especially when they include, you know, information on people we can contact and chat with, um, you know, about them and, and their personality, their work ethic. Um, so it, it goes more than just experience and education. It also goes into, you know, personality, cleanliness and um, being a good fit and, and having that good work ethic. And I think, honestly, that's something um, that we see a lack of when we do interview people. Um, is coming in with that professionalism. Um, but we do, you know, honestly, a lot of students from SCC, especially in the automotive department, when they come in, they are really prepared, which is nice to see, honestly. That, that is good to hear. And that's a good segue right into our, our next guest we're going to talk to is the, the person who is preparing them for that profession. David, thanks again for being here. Uh, what have been, it's a unique time for everyone. Tell us for your own perspective as an instructor for SEC who teaches automotive that relies so much on being able to show your students things. What, what are some of the challenges and how have you overcome them during this uh, bizarre time? So there has been a lot of challenges. Um, the, ch the challenges seem to be harder with first year students because they've not been in the shop as much. They don't have the experience that some of the second year and the last semester that these some of these guys were in for graduating, those guys seem to be doing really well with a lot of this stuff because they know how it works already. They know how to follow through. So we've put into place a lot of online, a lot of interactive programs. There's a lot of them out there. Some of them are very similar to what they use in the dealers. Um, there is some of the stuff that is exactly the same as what the dealers are using. It's just put in the form for students. And that's really been good for the students to, you know, take it on their self and the students that are really dedicated are still doing all this work. They're still logging in. They're still looking at all the stuff online. The ones that are going to, that are wanting to get this career are the ones that are, they're following this pathway to the end, even though we're not at school doing all of it. Now we met like this, for almost every class since we've been out. And I've had very few students miss. In fact, I think I had less students miss the online class sections <laughs> than in person. That's, that is, that's, uh, that's really, that's actually interesting. And uh, that, that's maybe a, a, a positive to come out of it, but, um, that's that's interesting to hear the ways that you've you've overcome it. You've you've been overcoming that. What are some ways that you think this experience may actually help your students in the long run? There's a couple of things that I've looked at, and a couple of things that students have commented that it, it shows them. First off, they think they've picked the right career, especially the students that I have right now, second year students, because nobody has stopped driving they're still going to the store, they're still going out, they're still doing stuff. And they feel like, first off, they've picked the career that's gonna be there for the long term. 
even in the situation we're in right now, they still feel like they would have jobs when they're out there. Once they graduate, they feel like this is something that's going to be there for the long run. Now, how it's helped some of these students, I think, really is their thought process on how to get finished with stuff, how to complete stuff. I think some of them have really moved forward in the, the technology side, which any of you guys that's on here from the dealers know that the cars are very complex and you're dealing with this kind of technology stuff all the time. And I think that some of them that's going to help them down the road being able to work on some of that stuff because I've actually worked with one of the engineers not long ago on a, on a vehicle and we actually set up a meeting just like this to talk about some of the things going on on that car. Good, good. Um, we obviously have some great employers with us today, and I know there are quite a few others in our service area. Um, can you speak to how plentiful the, the job market has been and continues to be for our graduates? And, and I would just kind of add and throw in there, you know, when we talk about COVID and being COVID proof, I appreciated Larry's answer about how um, all the precautions you have to take, because I hadn't even thought about all that. But um, I'm also curious as to this particular profession. I think a lot of uh, listeners are probably interested in that as well, is um, how COVID proof is, is this industry in light of the fact that, you know, our job's still secure. So after I talked with you, Tyler, and I, I reached out to several dealers, several um contact several past students to see what has been happening in this area. And I've also worked with our students that are graduating and all but one of them right now has some type of job out in the field that I know of. Um, the independent shops have kind of been slower the further you go towards Asheville, towards the bigger cities. But the closer to this area, the busier they seem to be, still be. The dealers that I've talked with and the auto body shops said they've really not slowed down much. Said they had a you know about a week that kind of slowed down because everybody was kind of in the initial panic of don't know what is going to happen. And then they said they went back to work and they're catching up stuff you know that they should have got done months ago anyhow. So they've been really busy in the and. Um, one of the body shops even had contacted us just as recent as a couple of weeks ago, looking for a student that may be willing to go into that field because they need more help still. Well, that's a, uh, that's good news. It's good to hear. And it kind of helps reinforce that point that we are here. We are training people at Southwestern community college for um, jobs that, that are going to be there for you in these yeah. uncertain times. Um, so, my, Go, did Before you, have you move on, on, I know that also that um, at Countryside, they're looking expanded more of their service area. And the, one of our um, graduating students just started um, about two weeks there, uh, two weeks ago, and um, they're looking to still hire another person on over there. Um, Tiffany might be able to address that real quick as how many people that, you know, they've been adding on or looking at. Sure. Um, yeah, so we actually have um, one open for a journeyman technician. Um, and we have two positions for uh, lube tech. So we are constantly trying to find, um, you know, the service. The service department's busy, and we are we are growing. So right now, we currently have three positions available. Yeah, um, and then Larry, I had had somebody um, from up there mention that you were looking to maybe add another person is are you still advertising for help up there also yeah uh, yes we're we're sounds like in the same position as as tiffany we're looking for uh what we'd call a, a b-level technician someone with a little bit of experience we may be a little differently in that we uh we like to train people our way and ford motor company has their way of doing things and <laughs> So uh, we certainly have uh, one technician position open. And uh, when we start talking about collision repair, and I think I saw Don Thomas join in. Yeah. I don't know if he's still there or not. He but, is. Uh, he's him, and I, 
and and David uh, have talked quite a bit about uh, coll the collision repair side. Uh, if if we ever look at, at uh, the opportunities in the automotive industry, uh, collision repair is a huge field. And yep. talking about technology, uh, it's amazing what these cars can do. And when they actually do get into a wreck, even with all the collision avoidance systems, uh, the technology involved to repair those vehicles safely, properly, uh, it's an incredible career opportunity. Uh, it's an industry opportunity. And uh, it, yeah. it's, it's good to see our, our institutions preparing uh, candidates for us. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, well, uh, I'd like to really thank both of you guys for being on here from the dealerships this morning. And I'm going to get it back over to Tyler so he can yeah. keep us on track. Well, with, with the time that we have remaining, I just wanted to give each of our guests um, one, like about 30 seconds or so, just to say, you know, cover anything we haven't had an opportunity to touch on this morning. Uh, so we'll, we can just start with, um, with you, David, and then we'll go to um, Larry, Tiffany, and then we'll close out with uh, Mike. So I think my biggest thing is, is, um, we know that the transportation needs there. We know that the tech need is there. We know that we need to get these people trained. And our plan is to get these guys started with summer classes. We're going to start online. We're going to then transition into the labs with the necessary precautions. So we're going to try to still meet the needs with the current situation that's going on. And that, that's our thing is we've talked with everybody. We're looking at the safety guidelines. We're looking at how we can set it up with, you know, smaller classes in there at a time. Um, I think this, this transportation field, like Larry said, is getting so technical. It takes every hour we can get the students in there to get them a good start, to get them a good basic beginning and then get them into then the technical stuff over their two years in the program. Very good. Very good. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hinton, anything you'd like to touch on before we go? Uh, wow. Uh, the automotive field's a great uh, industry, uh, a great opportunity for someone in our area uh, to earn an exceptional income. And I'm, I'm sure as Tiffany would say, uh, to be able to offer benefits and a career opportunity uh, to make a lot of money uh, and have a future for yourself and your family and the people that you provide for is something in this part of the country uh, can be tough to come by some, sometimes. Sir. Yes, sir. And uh, Tiffany, your thoughts? Um, I would just agree with Larry. You know, it's so nice. Um, to have a, a trade um, anymore. You know, you see people get away from trades as much and the the automotive field is is excellent. And I think in this time, we found out that we really are essential. I mean, it's like David said, there's cars on the road. People are still driving. People still need vehicles. So, you know, I think this, this field um, really provides a lot of opportunity um, for not for not our just our area, but students, you know, that are, that are learning and starting to get into that field. And um, it, it truly is a great opportunity. Thank you. And thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, Mr. Despo, some closing thoughts. Well, first, it is a real privilege to to be part of this team spotlighting this critical essential is the word industry and I'm really grateful for our guests for coming on board and uh, and talking about their professions and their 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 programs so thanks guys um, the other thing uh, second I, I began with saying that career services plays an important role an essential role in connecting job seekers and that's our students and our alumni and our public with employers and that's our that's the backbone of our economy and and there are citizens too and we do that in a lot of different ways if you go to career services um, on the SCC website, you'll see a lot of immediately accessible tools. We put out a job board where we post jobs of all kinds, and you'll see that uh, really active this summer, I think, as, as people begin hiring again. 
as syndications are that they will. And uh, you'll also see information about uh, preparing resumes. Uh, we've got a robust interview preparation tool um, and uh, a lot of information about marketing those soft skills, Tiffany, that you were talking about, work ethic and, and professional presentation. All of that is there. And you can also contact Jody or myself on the contact area, part of our page, email us. We can meet just like this and we can help you with any employment need. And so I just want to say, go to the career services website on SCC's website, just type in career services and you'll see everything there. Lots of tools, lots of information, many resources. So please, please take advantage of them. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And thanks again to all our guests and everybody who tuned in this morning. It's been great seeing all of you catching up a little bit. We, we want to encourage you to catch up with us each week, every Friday at the same time, using the same Google Meet link or the podcast provider you're, you're listening to this recording on. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about the employment climate for healthcare professions in our area. So I think that'll be another uh, really interesting and timely topic to get into. But thanks again to everybody for being here. And I uh, hope you have a great Friday and a, and a great weekend. We're getting close to Memorial Day already. Thank you, Tyler. Oh, thank you. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.